Hey guys, welcome to Bedford Greenhouses. If you do not know me, my name is Trey. I am the general manager here and we are actually up in our pollinator garden and cut flower garden, um, right next to Riverwatch Parkway actually. If you're ever driving down Riverwatch, you could see a lot of these flowers um, driving down the streets. And it's actually gonna be really cool to look at. We have a lot of sunflowers out here and some zinnias. I'll kind of show you what we got going on, but you'll be able to see it from Riverwatch. It'll be super eye-catching. We're excited about it. Um, but if you wanna get a little bit closer, we could kind of go into detail of what we have growing out here. Um, this right here, these two little sections of eight foot beds are our pollinator garden. We have a lot of things for butterflies as well as bees. The, Probably the biggest showstopper right here in the center is our African blue basil, and it has bees all over it. This is one of the best pollinators that we have, and I mean, the bees just absolutely love it. They're actually sterile, um, so it'll continuously bloom no matter what. You don't have to worry about it going to seed like other basils. Most basils you have to cut back because they'll bolt. You have to cut the flowers off so that you could have a good, nice plant for a longer period of time. But this one's pretty good. We've had really good luck with it blooming kind of nonstop through the summer. Also in here, we have some Miss Huff lantanas, the pink, orange, yellow perennial lantana. Can get very tall, pollinators love it. We have some Prairie Sun, I think that's the name of this one, yep. Prairie Sun Rudbeckia, it's a black-eyed Susan, technically a green-eyed Susan, but definitely one of my favorites. I actually use these a lot in flower arrangements and whatnot because I love just the lime green center on the flower, I think is real cool and really pretty. We have some cone flowers in here. This is the Puff Vanilla Echinacea, real cool flower there. We have Wild Berry, and then I think this one is Trace Amigos. Um, has a bunch of different colors on the same plant. You'll get some pinks and some reds and some oranges. Pollinators, butterflies, they all love cone flowers. In the center, we actually have a butterfly bush. I think this is Pugster White. Yep, Pugster White from Proven Winners. Does really well, stays really nice and compact. You don't have to worry about it getting huge and out of control like a lot of your old fashioned butterfly bushes. We have some fennel because caterpillars love fennel. We have some parsleys, gotta have milkweed. We have a bunch of varieties. We have the perennial milkweed, the, um, the tuberosa, and then we have some of the swamp milkweed as well with those real pretty big pink flowers on them. We have, let's see what else is down here. We have the meteor showers verbena. This is also from Proven Winners. We have some dragonflies currently hanging out on there. Um, a really good plant, can withstand our heat, very drought tolerant, love to use that one. This Shasta Daisy here is actually a compact version. I think this is Banana Cream 2. Yep, that's Banana Cream 2 from Proven Winners. Stays really nice and compact. Pollinator favorites. And then in this area, we kind of just mirrored the eight foot bed to the right. We also have some dill. Caterpillars love dill. What else? We have Bee Balm. Bee Balm's another really good one. It blooms when it gets real hot, kind of late summer. Midsummer, late summer, also a good variety. And if you work your way into our next kind of 16 foot section, we have two beds of zinnias. We have the Zinderella peach, real pretty peach color, looks really good in flower arrangements. And then I think this bed is a queen lime mix. So if y'all have heard of the queen lime zinnias, they have oranges and pinks, peaches, just a bunch of different varieties that all kind of have that lime center on them almost like a, I think it's like a blush color. They have a lot of blush colors and lime colors to them. We're really excited about these. I actually pinched these recently. I cut them back pretty hard. If you're not the kind of person that enjoys pinching your plants, you probably don't wanna hang out around me because I will cut them back pretty tough. But the reason we do that is because it creates a lot of taller branches later in the season. So instead of just having one, two, three, really tall flowers, you'll get many more flowers with a lot of more like medium sized um, stems, but you'll still get a lot of flowers. Um, in this bed and the next four, we have a lot of our sunflowers. I like to do the pro cut varieties. These are actually about to bloom. Most of these are budded up already. They'll have flowers on them probably by the beginning of next week going into July 2nd, that weekend. Um, 
but Pro Cut is probably my favorite because you get to grow so many in a small space. So you can put them six inches apart. It lets us get, I think there's over 60, 70 sunflowers in this one eight by four bed. And they really don't get that crowded out. What we'll actually do as they are about to open, I will take all of the leaves off from the bottom just about to the very top section. So they really start putting all their energy into the flower. Um, kind of a trick of the trade, but creates a much larger flower, at least I think so, I, I would imagine it would, just having all that energy go up to the flower. Um, in the next flower bed, we have a branching sunflower. I think this is a double, it's a double gold branching sunflower, so I pinched these back pretty recently. We'll have a lot of branches on this guy. We have some more pro cuts. We do the white light, the orange XL. I like the plum ones, the red ones. We'll do a bunch of different colors. We'll actually cut these for you guys to buy and we might even give away some. Um, it's more so just a fun project. We like to grow flowers. I've really enjoyed kind of diving into the cut flower world and sunflowers are a pretty easy one to do. I mean, it stays sunny out here all day long. It's hot and they are doing fantastic. In this bed, we have some amaranthus. I actually had to dust these because we had really bad beetles on them. Um, you could see that's why they kind of look like Swiss cheese. But yeah, we've been trying to keep the beetles off those. It wasn't Japanese beetles, it was a smaller beetle. Um, but they're starting to come out of it pretty nicely. A lot of this new growth actually looks pretty good and it's not getting eaten as often. So I think that's working. Moving down the beds, we have some celosia. This is a flamingo feathers. It's a real pretty kind of pale pink color. We have some gumfrenia. I think those are cosmos in there. Yeah, some cosmos. And then this right here, on the very end is a mahogany splendor hibiscus. And we actually use this not so much for the flowers, but for the foliage. It has that real pretty burgundy foliage. We'll use it a lot of times in the fall just to kind of add some contrast to flower arrangements. They look really good with a lot of the blush and the queen. Um, the queen lime mix zinnias look really good with this burgundy foliage. And then last but certainly not least, we have just started our herb garden. So we have some basils in here. I think there's marjoram. Thank God Olivia labeled most of these. Um, rosemaries, parsleys, I think this is actually chamomile right here in the center. It's doing really well. Real pretty. Veronica started these from seed. We have some oreganos, mints, some bee balm and echinacea because they're actually can be not only pollinator favorites, but they're also medicinal. A lot of times people use them for certain applications. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the extent of what we got going on out here. I think Veronica talked a little bit about it in our nursery tour, but we're actually going to be developing a lot of this area into more sunflower space, not so much the cut flower sunflowers, but we'll actually have a lot of your, just like old fashioned, huge sunflowers that the birds love, pollinators love, and you guys can come take pictures with. You'll be able to see them from Riverwatch. It'll be really cool to kind of have that out here. So yeah, let's go show you. I'm gonna show you one more thing. We'll show you the dahlias that we have growing and then that'll be it. Okay, up here in between greenhouses number six and seven, you'll also see over to the left our kind of test garden for vegetables and stuff. But over here to the right, we have our dahlias. I do most of our dahlias in pots because we don't have enough space for them out in the cut flower garden currently. Also, our cut flower garden gets full sun all day long and I worry that they would absolutely fry. So they are in front of this lattice actually that gets shade from about 3 p.m. on. So they tend to do pretty well. Um, we have some of the Kelvin floodlights, the yellows, a few other pink varieties in here. I think that is a Verde Glory. We have the Thomas Edison in the back, that real pretty purple color that's about to open. I put tomato cages on them because it holds the stems up really well. It would be the same as if you put kind of netting around a flower bed or if you just put like string around a flower bed. The tomato cages fit really well in the pots. I actually just get these and I'll cut the bottoms off so that they fit in the pots really well. And then over here to the left, we're growing some other varieties. I have the Bishop of Oxford. It's a real pretty 
orange color that's kind of on a dark foliage, dark purple foliage. We have some Cornell bronze, and then there's a romantic series over here as well that has a lot of pinks and whites and stuff like that. So they're starting to bloom now, but I'll probably cut off most of the flowers for this month and next month because they do their best in September and October. That's kind of when you'll see them get really tall, putting on flower stems up to, I mean, two to three feet long at times. So we're really excited about that. They're actually doing pretty well this year. So yeah, thank you guys for watching and for following along with us. If y'all want to come out here and check out our pollinator garden, our cut flower garden, any of us would be happy to show you. Um, we're having a really good time with it and we just, we want y'all to be included as well. So thank you for watching.